I haven't much time and there's a lot to cover, so let me start by saying it's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It's been a while and I apologize, uh, my schedule's kind of changed. Uh, the upshot of that is going to be, I'm not, I'm not sure how these videos are going to be looking. My, my length of time is cut down about a third. Uh, for a given session. Normally I, I had I think an hour and a half to two hours to to play and film and uh, I, would, I would upload it later so that that thankfully wasn't included in that time. Now I have about 45 minutes so we'll see I, I might have to combine sessions which might make something fuzzy in my memory I don't know the the videos are, might look kind of differently because of that and um, I, I don't think that's anything for me to apologize for but it's something that I feel is incumbent upon me to inform you of um, so what else do I have to go over oh so we're gonna be doing Battlestar Galactica with a little bit of the Exodus expansion I added in if you are a fan of that game and aren't aware of what the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament is it's uh, portrayed on this little thing behind me there's a video up I think where I explain it um, basically it's a tournament where I have these real people cards um, and I, I play through them uh, the game and then if they win they go on in the tournament and that's basically it um, so what else do we need to talk about? Oh, I should probably do the character draw. Let's do that. As you can see here, uh, my stack's kind of diminished. My real people cards have been going with me to a role-playing game. Um, it's been quite fun. Uh, we've, we've gotten into the practice of using the cards for uh, all the NPCs. So if, if, you're not, if your character's not involved in a scene... Um, or in the game, you can you'll draw an, a real people card depending um, on what's going on. And if there are any NPCs, that that's used to kind of define the NPC and um, help everyone immediately visualize it. So that's been so much fun. I stopped using my player character and I just play real people cards uh, NPCs whenever whenever it's necessary. Um, so the winner of this. In case you're wondering, actually maybe I should just draw one and then I'll tell you what's going to happen to the winner of this game. So here we draw and we have this gentleman here. This is Nineball and I don't think, oh, actually Nineball, he he came up in the last game. Uh, the, the person who had Nineball, we also use headbands so they have it on their head, um, was sitting across the room from me so I didn't see him very closely but um, he died pretty quickly. It was... Kind of a weird situation. Anyway, Nine Ball is self-employed. Um, his secret fantasy is to travel through time. Ooh, this is a good game for Nine Ball. Uh, there isn't actually time travel, but you know, it's, it takes place in another time if it's in our universe at all. Um, an unusual fact about Nine Ball is one ring finger as long as his middle finger. So here's this would be kind of like what it's like, I guess. Um, pet peeve is poor drivers. There are a lot of real people who that's the the thing that bothers them the most, which I think says something about our society. He'd like to meet Jesus Christ. His personal motto is think positive. He's most proud of being a Christian. His reputation in high school is friendly, and three words that describe him are meticulous, slow, and particular. Sounds like a board gamer. All right, so, nine ball. And I was going to tell you about what the winner gets to do. The winner gets to be France in Here I Stand. Uh, too bad I didn't assign the Protestants or the Pope um, or the Catholics to the winner of this. I chose France because, um, well, I, it just kind of felt right at the time. And then uh, there's the whole anthropological angle. I think Battlestar Galactica is kind of a anthropological show slash game. Definitely deals with um, or hints at the origins of humans. And um, a lot of uh, a lot of anthropological sites, um, or a lot of terms in anthropology, paleoanthropology, have French names because they're um, the Europeans looked for the origins of humans in Europe because uh, that made sense at the time. Um, anyway, let's draw another card, and then we'll go from there. Drops them on the ground. They are out of the running. I'm not going to pick them up. All right. We have another gentleman. 
This is Hubba, and I never, I've never seen Hubba before, or maybe in a shuffle, like, but I've never looked at this car before. His occupation is accounts payable, and I'm sure someone could tell me what that does. It sounds fiscal. Uh, his secret fantasy is to hike in Nepal. An unusual fact about Hubba is he never wore socks until today. I wish you could see his feet. His pet peeve is guys who ride, who clear their throats on his train ride. Uh, it says my train ride. Um, He'd like to meet John Updike. So again, it involves transportation. Even though it's not pet, the drivers aren't the pet peeve, it's people in his his commute. Uh, that's a big part of our life. He'd like to meet John Updike. I wonder if we don't uh, channel some of our, our feelings about the work day, though, in, in how we feel about... Um, I walk to work, and it's only two or three blocks. And I can't say that there's anything that particularly annoys me on those two or three blocks. So... I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to think, of, think of something to complain about on my walk to work. Um, his personal motto is connect with the process, not the product. Ooh, that's good. All right. Um, that's, a very, that's a very game way of thinking, I think. His most proud of overcoming a physical handicap. I wonder if that's related to his not sock wearing. Or maybe this is related to his not sock wearing reputation in high school is funny. He's the funny guy. And maybe he was telling a joke about the socks. Three words that describe him are persevering, interested, and not judgmental. So I shall try to extend him the same courtesy and not make any other judgments about, what's his name? Hubba. So we have Hubba and Nineball. Um, Battlestar Galactica, here's something else I want to say. I'm trying to, I, I, I have some talking points in my head. Little bullets, bullet points. I'll pick these guys up who fell on the floor. Um, the tripod. Anyway, Battlestar Galactica, I actually played this game, and this actually is interesting. This circles back to role playing again. Um, I actually played this game well before I was really had very much interest in board games. I played this game well before I actually even ever saw the show with a role playing group of mine. At the time, I was kind of of the opinion that board games were sort of watered down role playing games that I didn't really see a whole lot of reason to play them when you could role play. I, I've since changed my mind on that. I think they they do different things and it's it's there's a different different elements that your mind is interacting with. Um, so board games is more of a yeah. More contained. There's there's some things it can do that I think a, a uncontained game can't do and vice versa. I like to be able to do both now. Um, but back then I played Battlestar Galactica and I actually enjoyed the game. Um, I still, you know, I had my prejudice so I was still wishing we were playing our role-playing game instead, but I, you know, I actually got into it. Um, I don't think I was a Cylon. Since then, I've played the game a lot. I find it doesn't work well for me with gamer groups in the game shop. It works well um, with people who haven't played the game or who don't game very often, um, and it works well in the evenings. Just my personal experience. I enjoy it. A little bit more about the game later. I gotta shuffle again because I saw the top card. Whenever I see the top card, I I like to um, reshuffle. All right. So no. oh no, they're going everywhere. All right. A lady, this is Watermelon, she's an auditor, so I, I, I think that might be, she might audit Hubba's accounts payable. Uh, her secret fantasy is to be a famous actress. Well, you are on the screen, so uh, your wish is granted, Watermelon. An unusual fact about Watermelon is she's writing a cookbook about watermelons. Her pet peeve is, can you guess? She's a driver. Her pet peeve is Boston Drivers. Uh, she'd like to meet Katherine Hepburn. Her personal motto is C'est la vie. And the, there's a translation on here, that's life. That's what that means. I learned that what that meant from an old Apple IIc computer game called C'est la vie. I, I wanted to know what it meant. Um, and it's that's life. Uh, most proud of gaining her a MBA without a bachelor's degree. Hmm. Reputation. She, I wonder if she must have... I don't know how that works. Reputation in high school is a bookworm. Three words that describe her are determined, creative, and energetic. All right, here's Watermelon. We need someone who's really going to stir the pot for this game. Right? We'll see if that someone comes up. 
those of you who know the game, well, maybe I'll get to that when I explain the game. I'm going to give a quick explainer of the game. Um, a lot of people just fell out of the running before we get started. And that might use up the rest of our time. Let's see. All right. Next, another lady. This is Tater, as in the tot. Um, doesn't say that. I'm just surmising. Uh, she's a flight attendant. Her secret fantasy is to be a tennis pro. It's, that, that there's, those, those occupations seem related. Uh, an unusual fact about Tater is she's an incarnate of a tribal native 600-year-old man. Again, with the, that, that kind of goes to the anthropology, I think. Her pet peeve is backstabbers. So if, if we're going through transportation, right, her work is a form of transportation, so that, that's not her complaint. So how does she get to work? I, I wonder if, if flight attendants have to have a lot of trust in between jobs. Maybe they sleep at different people's apartments or houses, different places, maybe hotels. I, well, maybe, maybe they have a stipend, but if they can find a different place to stay, they get to keep their stipend. And so her on the way to work is her place to stay in between flights. And sometimes people can be like, sure, you can stay at my house. And then they're like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean tonight. And that's maybe the backstab. I don't know. Um, personal motto is what goes around, comes around. That's a good one. Uh, she, Oh, I, I missed one. She'd like to meet herself in a previous life, which I guess is the tribal native, 600-year-old man. I think she's serious. She's most proud of, she's still alive after living in NYC. Reputation in high school is always runner-up, never winner of school beauty pageant. That's some, that's that's potent there. I think that's I, I think she she's going to be a great character, a uh, great person. Three words that describe her are fast, industrious, and sensitive. Okay, she is going to be really fun to play with. I'm excited for her. Let's get right to our last one. And I guess I'll pick up some cards off the floor. I'm not going to pick them all up though. This is a mess. This is a real mess. Um, few. Like we're burning daylight here. Um, all right. One of the first times I played this post my um, the the onset of my contained game itis, I would play this. The guy I would one of the guys I'd play this with a lot was a very theatrical individual, and. His thing was, if he even if he was a Cylon, he would play for the humans to win. And he was very proud of that. And he also was very sensitive, I think. Like, um, I already forgot her name. Tater, as in the pot, that's right. Um, and if you, like if, like if I was a Cylon and I did something to him, he would really hold a grudge about that, even as a human. So as a Cylon, he would always work for the humans. And he had this, like... There was a definite narrative going on in his mind. It was it was something. Okay, here we go. Okay, here's the troublemaker, Brezza. He's a complete mediator, attorney general's office. Ooh, actually, maybe he's gonna be smooth things out. But since he's playing a game, he might want to um, might want to go against what he has to do in his professional life which is to calm things. Um, a secret fantasy is to play football for Notre Dame. An unusual fact is president of an illegal college fraternity. Oh, so maybe he will be a, maybe he's like Animal House guy. Pet peeve is people who borrow without asking. Mm-hmm. You'd like to meet Leslie Nielsen. His personal motto is carpe diem. Again, they have the translation, seize the day. He's most proud of his family, home, and school. Rep reputation in high school is happy. Three words that describe them are dedicated, random, and moody. And that is Brezza. All right, we have our five, our starting five. And we are going to uh, continue. We are going to go, um, and I'll teach you the game. Or I'll tell you a little bit about the game. I'm not going to teach you the game. I'm going to tell you about it. Real people, multi-game, so I'll much more. Okay, so here we have our board for Battlestar Galactica. Pretty much all set up. There's a few things I still have to do. One of those is the loyalty deck. So at the beginning of the game everyone's going to get a card that says either you're not a Cylon or you are a Cylon. Um, so if they're a Cylon they're, they win if the humans don't win and if they're 
not a Cylon. They win if the humans do win, and that's basically it. Um, everyone is going to be a character from the show. I think, you know, I can't stress this enough, I actually enjoy the characters more if I don't think about who they were in the, the show. So if you're, you know, you have misgivings about this game because you don't like to watch TV, um, I think you can appreciate it with without um, knowing who these people are. Um, it's kind of fun. So what, what you're doing is on a turn you're going to move and you can move to anywhere. There's not a certain number of spaces you can move. You don't have to roll a die or anything. You're going to do an action and the actions are labeled action and it says what it does. You will also have cards that um, could have actions on them. And then you'll resolve a crisis and a crisis will um, be something that you all have to do together to to work together to overcome this crisis and usually it will involve a skill check so as you see there's two colors here there's five colors of skills everyone's going to put cards face down into a pot cards that are of the color specified will go towards that number all the cards have numbers on them and cards that aren't those colors will go against that number so you can secretly sabotage it without people knowing um, people can try and guess though because different characters only get certain colors and then just by like um, how red your face is or how badly your hands are shaking that kind of thing so there's a strong social element there's also a strong cooperative element um, and I like how that works there are other games that that do the whole uh, someone's a secret trader thing and I think those do it very well um, I don't think they're necessarily a replacement for this game however because there's also this long you know you're all trying to attain this goal, but someone's not helping. Um, and I think the length of it comes closer to um, simu simulating what it's like to be in any group, like say a republic, and um, we could all feel that way about uh, other people in our country, for example, that maybe some people aren't uh, trying to help the team. <laughs> and so I think that works. I think that works for this game, and it's a lot of fun. There's spaceships out here. These are bad guy spaceships. These are good guy spaceships. You know, some of the characters are able to go out and fight the bad guy spaceships. I've never actually been one of those except in solitaire play because I I, I tend to like to be the the other people. I don't know people who are doing the more politicky stuff. That seems like more fun to me. Um, so I'm also going to be using some of the things from the ex the Exodus expansion. I'm not using the extra board which would actually probably sit over here and I'd move everything over. Um, I like that all right, it keeps the tension going. What it does is it has some ships that keep coming up, you know, whereas in this, the, the ship placement is completely random. I like the random ship placement for a couple reasons. One, I like not knowing they're coming because then it's just like, oh, expletive, they're here. Um, and also, uh, some people complain about the downtime that comes in this way. I like that downtime. I, I like that there's suddenly these quiet periods and then you have to decide what to do or whether to do anything at all. And those are the times where oftentimes just because people aren't occupied by some external threat, they maybe start bicker, bickering with each other, depending on the group you're with. Um, so I'm not using that board. I am going to use the CAG title, which you're supposed to use with that board because I like titles and I like to say CAG. Um, so yeah, so that's going to change the way the game's played. I also messed with this deck. Um, so I have all the cards from the Exodus expansion in here, uh, but I took certain cards out. I, I tried to kind of even it back out. Uh, it has to do with the, the rules for setup. So it's kind of a, a hybrid of an option, which could make for an unbalanced game. But again, it's only going to affect these cards and whoever's foolish enough to watch this. So I don't have any problem with that. Um, two rules I am using two options I am using whole hog are the one that lets you have personal goals which are a little weird but it's like you have a goal to lose fuel or something um, or no you have a, a goal to send someone to sick bay or you know things like that uh, those are kind of fun and if uh, what I don't like about them is well, no, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk any more about those. So I'm using that. I'm not using the final five rules for those who know that. Um, I just don't really like them. Uh, I am also using the, these little rules where you have these um, characters you meet up on the ship, and they're gonna traumatize you in some way, or else help you in some way. 
and place trauma on your card and there's this whole um, crossroads phase in this personal drama. I really like personal drama in games. I like that people have lives they lead and, and so this, you know, this is kind of a, uh, it's not the most in-depth way to do it, but it does add an element that I enjoy and another uh, situation for people to juggle. So that's what I'm doing. That's how the game's played. Oh, these are the little meters. Um, I forgot to tell you the, the wind condition. The, wind, the, the humans need to keep moving up their faster than light drives, spooling it up and jumping through space, um, drawing cards to gain distance, and they're trying to get to eight. And once they get to eight, if they jump one more time, it actually might be different with this crossroads phase. The next, yeah, if they jump one more time, uh, they win. All right. Uh, but if their their Battlestar Galactica gets damaged enough, I've never actually had that happen in a game, they'll lose. If any of these meters gets to zero, they'll lose. All right. Or if the Cylons board and they get to the end of this track, they lose. So that's a basic idea of what's going on in the game. Um, Cylons generally want to keep themselves secret for a certain amount of time. Eventually want to reveal they have more like a blunt powers, but uh, less effective in the long run if they are revealed right away. The random turn order, which is very nice when you're playing with cards, when it says the starting player is random, it's very easy to figure out who that is because you just shuffle them up and choose them. And then you can even randomize their seating arrangement, which is nice. So um, Nineball here got to pick first. He went with Laura Roslin, which was an interesting choice. He deliberated for a while, uh, which is his want. And then um, Brezza, he chose Leo Paolo Adama. He is a pilot person. Oh, and Laura Roslin, she's very presidential. She is also rather religious. Um, person and kind of a, a soft-spoken woman, but um, a very strong leader. Um, Adama is kind of the uh, the clean-cut pilot guy. Brezza went with him. He almost went with a military sort of guy. He might have gone for a political person, um, but that was already chosen, so he went with the pilot. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if someone, you have to have an even number of the different types with the exception of the blue support. So, um, I, I said that, I miss said that. If there's already, a, if there's one political leader, um, and the other, there, the other types aren't already taken, then you can't take a political leader. So, um, what's her name? Watermelon was able to choose a political leader because there's already one of everything by the time it was her turn. Um, so our uh, Tater, like the Tat, uh, she chose Saul Tai, which was an interesting choice, I think. He's an alcoholic, kind of a grumbly, um, realist type, but in the pessimistic sense type guy. Um, and then our um, very uh, Buddhist, I think, um, guy Hubba, he chose Chief Galen Tyrrell, the sort of um, a mechanic, and Watermelon chose Tori Foster, the driven political person. All right, so that's where we are. Our players are on the board. I want to tell you about this little board here. This is my whiteboard. Um, how I'm using it for this game is to kind of uh, gauge people's suspicion levels with each other. Um, when I've done the game in the past, I tried this out once just to see if it was feasible. Um, the This game kind of scared me to do um, solo. It doesn't really anymore. It's still, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, and especially since I tinkered with things since then. So, um, Anyway, uh, occasionally I'll show you this board, and you'll see a rating from 1 to 5. If it's 5, they're like positive. That person's a Cylon. If it's 1, then... or blank like it is, then they feel like they're innocent. Um, these guys are unusual in that they all started out with ratings of one with everyone. I had them all kind of evaluate. None of them had like a preconceived notion with anyone else. So they're all starting that way. They do have their loyalty cards. I haven't looked at them yet, so I don't know who they are, and I'm not going to show them to you. So I don't think I'm going to have time to start playing, but I can at least go over what this whole thing is for those of you who don't know, which is probably a lot of you. Um, so these are little people you can meet, and see they're on the board here. If you end your movement phase uh, in a place where one of those people are, you have to reveal the token that's on them. The token can either be um, good baggage, I'm using an Android term, bad baggage, or... Um, uh, it could kill you. So for those of you who are just familiar with the base game, you can die in this game. Um, I think certain crises might also kill you. If that happens, you reveal 
uh, your loyalty card, I believe. Maybe a loyalty card, I'm not sure, one or two. Um, and if it shows that you're not a Cylon, uh, you everyone will lose morale, and then you're going to choose a new person. It might show you are a Cylon, and then I think you end up like you were a revealed Cylon. You end up on the resurrection ship, and you have few, very few options. Um, so if it's a good one or a bad one, it's going to trigger one of these effects. Okay, either the good effect or the bad effect. And then you can you take one of the baggages you have and leave it on the person. Um, so that's a... Uh, the, the thing is... The reason why you'd leave a bad one, if you're a human, for example, is because you don't want to have bad baggage. If When you get to a certain point in the game, I think the uh, 8, the crossroads phase, or the Ionian Nebula, if you have too much bad baggage and you're a, a human, um, you will lose the game and be out of the game, I believe. And conversely, if you have too much good baggage and you're a Cylon, the same thing will happen. So you you have to kind of trigger these good and bad effects in order to absolve yourself. It's this kind of weird karma. Very Android-like, actually. Um, I think Android... I, I think Android probably inspired this whole mechanism, having these um, little personal dramas that you're dealing with. And that might be where we end it today, on that little explanatory note, um, because I am out of time. See you next time, and I think we'll actually start playing next time, so that'll be fun. Real People, Multi-Game Solitaire, Mega Tournament, Battlestar Galactica.